The horror genre always seems to be evolving. Some of these changes happen slowly, but occasionally a single movie rocks the foundation of horror to such a degree that the genre is never the same. Here are some of the scare fests that redefine the horror genre and our nightmares. A Nightmare on Elm Street For a long time, horror movies were relatively straightforward with a monster or like a crazy person. But then came A Nightmare on Elm Street, a film that blurred the line between reality and fantasy, creating a teen slasher with a supernatural twist. In many ways, it was pretty much the first of its kind. What makes this concept so genius is that since Freddy Krueger played an otherworldly role in the film, it left room to keep bringing him back for sequels. Lots of them, actually to wreak havoc on teens in insane ways that actually fit the story. Other franchises attempted the same supernatural slant, but they ended up just creating a bunch of crazy guys with super strength who never seem to die, no matter how many times you shoot them. It really wasn't until Child's Play stuck the soul of a serial killer into a doll's body that another film successfully blurred the lines between reality and the supernatural. But the knife-fingered man of our nightmares went on to become an icon in the horror world, showing it's not easy to make a freaky killer that can endure for decades. Jaws You might think Jaws isn't really a true horror film. To that we say, go watch the beginning and come back. Go ahead, we'll wait. <laughs> Terrifying, right? The creature is basically unstoppable and, with no rhyme or reason, starts killing everyone in its path. Jaws popularized the giant monsters eating people genre for a new age. If it weren't for Jaws, that genre either wouldn't exist or at the very least wouldn't be nearly as vibrant as it is today. While it wasn't the first film to do so, the way Jaws portrayed the terrifying creature, almost always in shadows, seeming more a malevolent force than anything that you could actually defeat, would influence movies for years to come. After Jaws came dozens of copies that were basically just Jaws with a different animal. A bunch of them were amazingly bad. Remember Anaconda? Sorry, you do now. Some were great, like Lake Placid, and some were even made by Spielberg, but none of them would have existed if not for that pesky, man-eating shark. The Blair Witch Project When the Blair Witch Project hit theaters in 1999, many moviegoers didn't know what to make of the horrifyingly realistic film. The movie's shaky camera work, documentary-style production, and nose-dripping close-ups were elements no one had seen before. Plenty of people left the theaters thinking the footage was real. After Blair Witch popularized the found footage genre, many aspiring filmmakers applied the idea to their own projects. Thanks to the relatively low budget needed for filming, newcomers proved that practically anyone could make a movie using this technique, though making a good one still proved to be a challenge. As technology evolves, so does this genre. Smartphones, GoPros, and security cameras allow found footage to provide different viewpoints, like what we see in movies like Paranormal Activity and Cloverfield. Even the last season of American Horror Story used found footage, setting up a house with hidden cameras and locking up people with just a smartphone so they could record their own murders. The Shining Stanley Kubrick's adaptation of Stephen King's novel showed that you didn't need cheap scare tactics and obnoxious music to make the audience jump. Instead, hotel scenes were kept well lit, and ghosts were hallucinations caused by Jack Torrance's cabin fever and creeping insanity. Using savvy camera angles and intelligent dialogue, The Shining redefined what it meant to be a horror movie. The hotel's creepy sense of isolation is emphasized by the shockingly small number of scenes that feature all three members of Jack's family together. Also, unlike horror movies before The Shining, most of what could be classified as the scary stuff doesn't occur until the end of the movie, while the rest is portrayed in a space blurred between reality and fantasy. Texas Chainsaw Massacre the movie where we first met Leatherface and his favorite toy is notable for being one of the most realistic depictions of what it's like to live in Texas. No, not the murdery parts. But some parts of Texas are terrifying all on their own. Those big empty wastes where there's nothing around but fields, and then a small house off in the distance. It's on roads like these that the heroes of this film wander, finding horror as they pick up a stray hitchhiker only to realize he's dangerously mad. And he's the nicest member of his family. Texas Chainsaw Massacre was amazing for its time. It was one of the most brutal films ever made when it came out. 
and it defined what slashers would come to be. Savage, horrifying, and sometimes just a tiny bit inspired by real life. Despite a slew of successors, none have ever come close to making the ferocious horror let loose by Leatherface, who, oh yeah, is wearing a mask made out of people's skin. The first time you see him slaughter and the body twitches in death, that's an image that'll stick with you, whether you like it or not. Alien There have been sci-fi movies with giant monsters before, but never a straight-up horror film about them. Then Alien came along. Not only did it bring about a renewal in body horror across all science fiction, but it also created the modern concept of science fiction horror films. If it weren't for Alien, we would have never gotten films like Event Horizon or Pandora. But being the excellent film it is, Alien wasn't content with simply creating a genre. It also redefined how horror films operated. Before this, Final Girls, the girls who lasted until the end of the movie and occasionally won, were already a thing. But with Alien came a bold new era of girls who were as fearsome as the monsters themselves, changing how horror film protagonists worked forever after. Scream This Wes Craven classic brought horror fans back into theaters, after many had grown tired of watching the never-ending sequels of 80s slasher flicks. Just how many times could Jason and Michael Myers possibly die? Scream introduced a fresh, postmodern take on the genre, completely changing the formula for teen horror films. Craven made sure his characters were familiar with the tropes of those movies, too, knowledge that would be useful when their phones rang. For instance, number one, you can never have sex. <laughs> <laughs> Scream all but invented the self-referential, self-aware horror movie. Even the killer took time out of his bloody rampage to make horror movie references, as he asks his victims trivia in order to decide whether they live or die. In order to stay alive, the teens think they can use what they know from slasher films, creating a set of rules to follow like not having sex, not doing drugs, and absolutely never saying, I'll be right back! <laughs> paranormal Activity When it comes to paranormal activity, you either love it or hate it. It was filmed with a handheld camera that almost anyone could afford in someone's house with almost no special effects. There's almost no plot, no professional actors, and no real big scares to be seen. It's either a pretty great film or the worst film ever made, depending on who you talk to. No matter what you think about it, though, there's one undeniable fact. It helped usher in a huge surge of new found footage horror movies. It wasn't the first, obviously, but with the success of Paranormal Activity, a movie made for next to no money, it showed movie studios that people would gobble up found footage. It even helped keep the subgenre alive long enough for a Blair Witch reboot. Thank Paranormal Activity. Even if a whole lot of people thought it was boring, it gave us a ton of movies that weren't. Night of the Living Dead one of the best movies ever made, Night of the Living Dead is completely free to watch because George Romero didn't copyright it. It's not his fault, though. He wasn't an experienced filmmaker at the time. The movie was his first, and it was basically made with couch cushion change. Despite that, it became one of the most influential horror films in history. Not only did it bring about a renaissance in independent filmmaking, it introduced the world to a classic horror staple the slow, flesh-eating zombies. Before Night of the Living Dead, most zombies were magically controlled beings, finding their roots in the Western ideas of voodoo. But Romero changed all that. He introduced creatures that rose from the dead, not due to any magic, but because of science. While it's not explicitly said what exactly caused the creatures to rise, all of the theories concern NASA probes and viruses. That's all stuff that exists in the real world, turning zombies from fantasy monsters into science fiction horror. The Amityville Horror When it was first released in 1979, The Amityville Horror was already familiar to the world thanks to the real-life murders that inspired the story. The film fleshed things out, giving viewers more details about the infamous house, whether the details were all true or not. And it revolutionized the idea that a horror film could be based on real-life events. While other horror films have certainly claimed to be based on true events, they're usually so loosely based that the film hardly deserves that subtitle. The Amityville Horror, however, used news reports about the events, interviewed police who reported to the scene of the actual murders, and depicted the experiences of the Lutz family as close as they could during filming. The success of the movie inspired several other paranormal movies like Poltergeist, and demonstrated how audiences are suckers for horror flicks based on a true story, even if it may not actually be all that true. Saw and Hostel Yeah, we're cheating and putting two movies together, but it's only because they came out at around the same time. Before Saw and Hostel came out, horror movies were very gore-filled and very scary, but there were also typically plots and ideas. They were, you know, actual movies, not just celebrations of gore. 
It wasn't until Saw and Hostel came around that the idea of torture-based horror became an actual thing. It led to a slew of horror movies that don't care about much outside of shock and awe. No plot, no point, nothing but blood, guts, gore, and torture. If it weren't for these films, horror movies today wouldn't be anywhere nearly as overtly brutal and graphic. And what kind of world would that be? Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.